Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. I'm Jordan. And today we're joined by, uh, a, I would say, a special guest. He's a, he's a writer, performer, comedian, general funny man, musician also randomly. What's that about? Dimmy did you eBay. Yeah. Hello. Honestly, a special guest. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. All your other guests are shit is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. We're really excited just to have a guy. We've been yeah. pulling people off the street and they're not interested. How, how do you feel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your feelings. Hey, look over me. <laughs> how are you doing, bud? I'm doing all right. Uh, June gloom. Uh, June I, gloom. It's embarrassing to walk around just being like, shouldn't it be sunny? Like, I, I feel like I just started getting up earlier, which yeah. is, as an adult, just an embarrassing thing to admit. It's like, I'm trying out this new thing of being awake in the morning. We hang out with a bunch of degenerate streamers who, yeah. like, wake up at 2 p.m. Right. Yeah. It makes me feel very well adjusted. <laughs> it, yes. For, yeah. to, for them to just be like, hey, they have, I can't remember who said it, they admitted to having gay nightclub hours mm. of... <laughs> Getting ready at midnight yeah. <laughs> to head out at about 2 a.m. That I, I mean, I, I've never done that level of it, but I, <laughs> yeah. I feel like there'll be times where I'm like, well, this party's not going to start till 11. So I'll just, you know, I'll roll up at 11. And I, right. now I'm like, I'm going to bed at 11, waking up at 930. And I'm like, great. The world's going to be open and everything's <laughs> going to happen, like happen for me. And then I go out and it's like, well, it's still cloudy. I don't, yeah. this is what I was yeah. promised. I'm like right. going crazy. This is not right. It's not. This is wrong. I, it's so great. It shouldn't be like this in Los Angeles. It's not, it's still like, what a beautiful place. But I'm just like, give me some sun. Right. I do feel like, and this is a very like LA inside baseball conversation, but LA weather has been kind of weird for a year. I, I feel yeah. like. it's been like rainy, strangely. Mm. My house flooded in January. What? Oh, uh, you know, okay. Yes. I, so <laughs> I, uh, uh, end of January, I had to go to Puerto Rico for work for three months and four days before I left, I went to see a movie with friends, came home and saw my dog on the lower level of my house. Just like I was, and I saw some water. I was like, how did you get down here? And why are you, did you pee? And then I, was, I looked up and I was like, oh no, there's a lot of water. Did I, you pee a lot? <laughs> I was just like, buddy, what happened? And then he looks up at me like, almost like he's like, I don't know what's going on. There's a lot of water. Right. And then I, I walked in. He's on a me. plank of wood <laughs> Yeah, he's just like, I, I've never drank this much water. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, but then I, I walked down the hall and I just see there's water everywhere. And I, I, I think I have this sort of panic response where something is so bad that it's like, uh, I, it's like, it should break me down. I just start laughing. I'm just like, this is insane. This is right. You have to believe this is hilarious. And I just yeah, couldn't yeah. stop laughing. And I was like taking photos and sending it to my girlfriend. She'd be like, well, I'm, I'm living in fucking Titanic now. Yeah. Like it, it was wild. And I was like, well, I guess I gotta, cause I was hopping on a plane to take my dog to Texas with my parents, like in four hours. Oh my and then God. I was like, Okay, so I'm going to come back quickly after that just to deal with the house and then go off to Puerto Rico. For, but yeah, houses in LA aren't built for yeah, yeah. No the amount of rain all. that was happening uh, in the, January. The coldest winters I've ever had in my life were after moving to LA. Because they understand. like I indoors is the same as outdoors. Nothing's yeah. insulated. <laughs> we, so in my old Pico Union apartment, I was just like, I just... Also, I think they illegally just didn't have heating of any kind. That's but right. I they just had two heaters right next to me and was editing podcasts, sat on the couch with those heaters for, I would say, uh, three and a half months. Just sat. Just, it's insane. It's unsustainable. Yeah. Nothing flooded. I'm not like a loser. <laughs> no, yeah, that'd be <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Because that's a that's like a you problem if things yeah. flood. It, 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 kind of cringe. Kind of was. <laughs> it was very much like. You know, in my defense, I am Poseidon. <laughs> well, yes, I did. You know, I pissed off the, the Navi and they sent a flood oh, to yeah, my home. I will say days before that, I had watched, uh, I watched Avatar and this is, it's not related. I watched Avatar in <laughs> You're theaters. You're like, this is the way of the water. This, I tr <laughs> the thing is like, I watched Avatar in theaters and then the screener uh, for the WJ came out. I was like. I'm gonna just watch it in my home. I know James Cameron wouldn't like that, but I'm gonna do it. And then the oh. next day it flooded, and I was like, oh, he knows. Yeah, yeah. He sent the water. Watch, yeah. He knows. Dude, that's. Damn I know you watched it on your phone in low light. You're not supposed to do that. It's 3D. <laughs> you go to the theater. God. You knew I was in my little submarine. Oh, I yeah. here. What do you do? do in the event of a flood? Great question. Uh, <laughs> so for me, the first thing was checking to see if my insurance covered it. My home insurance specifically said, we do not cover floods. And I was like, <laughs> to point that out, <laughs> it's fucking insane. They're like, let's just get this out of the way. No flood. It's like, okay. It's, I'm always like, did you send, did you say that knowing you were going to send a flood? You opened the document real fast and it like popped in. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it was like, just, you see yeah. the cursor. It's like, <laughs> like, 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 like,
Um, <laughs> but I, uh, and then I was just like, okay, I'm going to call like a, a remediation team to come in and drag the water out. And then they got to test for mold. And the, the, the thing is like, they had to like rip up the floorboards too. And they were like, we don't put floorboards back in. So I had to call someone else to do that <laughs> right. while I was gone, <laughs> which was a nightmare. It, it truly was like, they're yeah. like, Oh, no mold. I was like, great. Are you going to put it back? Whoa. Hey, whoa, that's hey. not, that's a different guy. Toothpaste yeah. in the tube, bro. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Best of luck. Uh, that's a different union. Um, but, and then I had to, it was all like, cause I was in Puerto Rico just making calls like, Hey, can you do this? How much? Okay, sure. And then, right. uh, yeah. And then like, I have like, no choice in this matter. Really? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then later, like it happened a few more times over the course of the next two months. And I just like, I had friends staying there at that point and I was just kind of like, uh, Hey, if this happens, take photos and send it to me. I'm going to get new insurance that specifically covers floods. Yeah. But then I just bought like the last time it happened, I bought like four dehumidifiers and mm. a bunch of towels and just fucking put them down being like, right. this will fix it. And kept having to have people come to the house and be like, what, wh- why did this happen? And every person told me something different and I, was, right. I just didn't figure out what it was. Yeah. Wow. You're very, very experiences, uh, like that with professionals, like true true trade professionals or even medical professionals and it's so messy that it almost feels like a cure for imposter syndrome yeah and i'm like oh you don't know we're like a guy in a suit comes like weird and you're like what weird <laughs> this is your job you that happened to me i had I like a, it's weird <laughs> yeah i had uh i had upstairs some um issues with my like light fixture and someone came out to fix it and i was downstairs here on a call with Anastasia and uh, I lost internet connection and my router, like uh, the modem is plugged in upstairs. So I was like, Oh, they must have taken out power temporarily because they were working on the light. That made sense to me. Yeah. And then as they were leaving, they're like all fixed. And I was like, Hey, the power's out. And he was like, huh? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, I was like, wait, no, it is. And then, and then he kept, and I, Like, uh, the guy was from Russia, which isn't relevant except for the fact that like, there was a bit of a language barrier where I like, Mm. didn't fully understand what he was saying, but he just came out of the room going, I don't know. I I didn't, I didn't touch it. And I was like, you were, what do you mean? You didn't touch it. (laughs) It's literally what you were touching. It's also like, if they're just like, you don't have to call someone. It's like, but I, you, I would call you. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, you're supposed to know. You flooded it. Yeah. Yeah. You You did this. You did this. You came in with a big bucket of water. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That was, that was wild. And then fortunately it was, um, an easy fix. But for a time I was concerned that they were going to leave me without power. And yeah. I was going to be like, uh, who now who do I call? The one thing I will say is I do feel like when you get enough of those scenarios, you start to learn more about a house and like how yes. to work it. And I feel like I just, I become like, like a DIY genius where I'm just sort of like, no, I can figure this out without right. killing myself I accidentally, like yeah. in the electrical stuff. But I, I, I do feel like, like just the other day I had a problem with my gas and some guy came in and was like, I, I'm going to tell you something that I shouldn't tell you because it, it makes us a lot of money and people don't know it, but do this. And I was like, good to know. And I'm just like mentally going, oh, here's all the things you got to do. Right. But, That's no, that I am starting to watch toilet tutorials when mm-hmm. my toilet is. Um, how to use. Yeah, yeah, like I'm. Where is it? I keep <laughs> missing the toilet. And, I'm sure. like, how, and that's why I, I don't think I got potty trained as a kid. You well, it's the opposite the... of basketball. You don't want to aim for the backboard. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. yeah, I keep trying to lob it in. <laughs> you know, when it's just creating a mess. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, you can just go straight I down. just go you straight in. Okay. <laughs> if you but don't want the extra pizzazz points, there's, there's you have the dunk contest <laughs> for poop. Um, the, I'm getting, or I, I've learned that there are so many toilet YouTubers Mm. or plumbing guys on YouTube who have a plumbing business, like a local plumbing business, but they're like, people always have these problems. Let me just make a video. And it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And it's just, it is exactly the same as somebody with a bunch of camera knowledge explaining the new Sony cameras, but somebody with a ton of plumbing knowledge going, let me show you how to break open a Gibraltar 5,000 or whatever. I think that's like, that's the good side of the internet. Like the democratization of information where it's someone just being like, I know a lot about this and I live like in this area. Let me just get online and spread this information to people who need it. And it's like, and you make money that way. And it just feels like yeah. you can learn anything yeah. you want to off of YouTube. So I'm just being like, yeah, I know how to clean gutters on this specific car. And you can just look at It's great. Yeah, it's no, it's very cool. It's, yeah, I do think there's generally an assumption that if a skill set's very specific and niche, yeah. then it is impossible to learn or get access to. No. As opposed to just to have it's niche because there's fewer people that need to do it. But like complicated cottage industries. 
it's still complicated. I totally. Mean, that's also the benefit. Yeah, you mean even camera YouTubers. Oh, yeah. How many fucking people need to figure out the logistics of a camera? Right. A couple a hundred in the world. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's really not that many It's really that interesting. Need, yeah. One time I uh, was watching a small camera YouTuber whose footage on YouTube looked incredible. So mm-hmm. I just DM'd him and I was like, what are your settings? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your specific setup. I want it for myself. My favorite YouTube tutorials are the ones that it's all breathing. It's about five minutes of. So what you guys first of all, you, sorry, oh, right. sorry, Jacob. They don't know uh, that they're recording. What you need yeah. to know is, um, so the computer is. Mm-hmm. It's I think the, maybe it's the volume the big, is kind of low. I'm just gonna. It's the um, it's the big, and then you no, put it on two X and they like start that. speaking faster anyway. So it's, <laughs> then it's too fast. They always have an intro that's like very intense. And you're like, yeah. this doesn't match the do 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 do. Steven Tech Tutorials, <laughs> and then just what like, up, guys? It's Steven Tech Tutorials. Everybody. Make sure to hit that like and hit that subscribe. And by the way, we have a merch giveaway going on right now. And I'm like, why do you? Perfect. Could you please just tell? It's like uh, you scan forward, and it's like anyway. Thanks for watching. You're like, what the fuck? There's yeah. a, yeah. Where in this is the th- information? there's that uh it's like a super old tweet where it's it's like a suit you know like you see the screenshots that have aged over time oh yeah <laughs> they're like super they deep the artifact it was uh yeah the artifacting um it was like at youtube uh why are you putting a pre-roll ad why is a pre-roll ad play right now my grandmother is choking <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Signing up for premium as quickly as you can. Yeah. I mean, in their defense, like, why are you looking that up? Why are you looking up a video as it shows? Like, oh, God. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, how, to, how to um, Heimlich. How, to Heim- how you spell Heimlich? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, what's ham- going on, guys? Welcome to Heimlich Camera Tutorials. Yeah. <laughs> what up? I'm about to lick a ham today. <laughs> yeah, I keep putting up the no. wrong video. <laughs> why do we keep watching the same one? <laughs> do you ever get, um, speaking of talking to experts, I would much rather, like, look up a guide myself or watch a video then talk to a human being on the phone yeah i that's very generational i, I, I think, think i'm so. the same way but but i realize and maybe this is like a little bit of the older generation of me like seeping in when i was a child i would call the nintendo hotline to get help in video games mm. So I was clearly, when I was motivated enough, I was willing to talk to somebody or or I didn't have any social anxiety as a child where I was just like, I can't find the great fairy fountain. (laughs) Can someone please explain? Also, there's like no resources yet. Yeah, I couldn't go on the internet because I had like terrible dial up. Totally. Someone was on the phone and I wasn't allowed to use the internet. Calling up, asking how to like find uh, an Easter egg in Wind Waker, but being like, my grandma's joking. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have time. Tell me where it is right now. Yeah, I feel like I, I've always been someone who prefers to look it up, and I don't know where that comes from. Maybe it is just, I feel like as a kid, I would be worried that, like, talking to, it's like there are rules, you're almost just like, when you socialize, it's like, you're supposed to do this and this and this, and I was always afraid that, like, I'm going to miss one of those rules and make right. someone feel bad or right. something. like the schema of, like, the the recipe of a conversation yeah. where you're supposed to you end up learning say wrong. certain things. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I, I think that I really do think that. And I'm like, I think that is extended to me as, as an adult being like, if I have to talk to someone in person, it's like, it's not this thing that's like, oh, I hate doing it, but I do just, the anxiety comes from, I don't want to leave an impression of being like a dick on accident. Mm-hmm. And then I start thinking like, okay, what, what are the things I need to do to leave a good impression here? And then it just starts to feel like, well, all of these interactions are a weight. Yeah. I think we all, we all work in, spaces and, and industries where you do have big focused chunks of having to communicate yeah. as like concisely and successfully mm-hmm. as possible. But then you also have a lot of solo time mm-hmm. where you're reliant on yourself for delivering the thing you needed to do. And you alone have to do it. There's totally. really a way of reaching out. And sometimes I it, switching gears is a little challenging. Like, well, I've been at home only thinking about this project for 10 hours. I guess now I'll check in and send it to someone yeah. and they can give their feedback. And I'm like, but, but they'll be so pissed. I'll send them something. Are you serious? But I'm scum. I'm, I haven't showered. Yeah. I'm dirty. You gotta, yeah. How you uh, compose the email in a way that's like, sorry to bother you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, oh, yeah. A, I'm an idiot and I'm so stupid and bad. <laughs> hey, hey, by the way, I'm insane. But can uh, we like move the meeting by five minutes or whatever? Yeah. It's like always a small ask. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. 15 minute <laughs> intro section. Yeah. Uh, Demi, like, so for the people who don't know you, mm-hmm. would you say you're a writer by trade? I, yes, I, I 
do feel like that's the thing that I define my career by. Mm. Because, like, yeah, you've written for countless shows that people know and love. Mm -hmm. And uh, an important part of the current moment right now sure. is that there is a writer's strike going on. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and you don't agree with this stuff. <laughs> yeah. I think they, they should let us write <laughs> yeah. again. AI should replace. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. This strike's too scary. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to stand up. I'm not up. supposed to be outside. I'm in a basement somewhere. <laughs> this sign is heavy. Um, <laughs> that's what it says. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be a good sign. Good sign. <laughs> yeah. good I writing. won't give you credit for it. <laughs> don't know. Oh shit. It was AI. Um, the the back has like a executive producer of like a billionaire who like yeah. doesn't do any work. <laughs> They're all made by Rupert um, Murdoch. So yeah, like uh, we've talked a little bit about the writer strike, mm. but like if you could like maybe give like a little brief like, totally. synopsis in your own words or what your own experience has been like. Yeah, it, it's hard to give the briefest synopsis because there's so many different things that every right. person is like. Definitely. Here's why I'm striking, but in general, it's like there is a guild of the major studios called the AMPTP and they basically it's like all of the theatrical or big releases are are like produced by them and at the bottom of the chain of like creation everything starts with the writers and so right. you think it's like okay they're getting fair compensation for their work they are uh being uh treated well and like given the respect to create work well yeah and uh just be i think the with streaming as like a new invention in the industry things that were decided back when it was like we had networks and we had ad buys where it's like, you know how much uh, right. a show is being watched and therefore you can be compensated right. ac according to your success. All of that is kind of like died. Yeah. And so uh, as the industry has changed over the like, last 15 years, the uh, writers have not been compensated well because streamers don't want to reveal their numbers and they they are like well we have streamers so much which in our space might mean a little sorry different yeah, thing. yeah, uh, yeah like, which is like like your netflix is your hulu yeah netflix yeah. hulu even apple amazon all of the like streaming networks basically and right. their whole thing is like we have data we don't need to rely as much on writers and we don't need to take as many risks and all this stuff and it means that basically writing as a profession is slowly being like pushed out or smushed so that the only the, the only people who can continue to like work successfully in that field are people who have already got a foothold in it. So right. it's like we're striking right now for better pay, for better residuals to guarantee the future of like our career and not have it be sort of pushed out by them using AI as a tool to not just yeah. replace us, but just kind of be like, we don't need as much of your input. We're mm -hmm. just going to give you like an outline or an idea right. of what we need and just write that. Uh, we're striking for pe more people to be hired on shows because there's a lot of times where they do this thing called a mini room where it's basically like when they're like, we like this idea, but we're not sure about it. We're going to put together a room of people to basically write the season and then we'll decide if we want it. Yeah. And then it's like, if they do decide they want it, they don't have to hire those people. They can just be like, well, you wrote the outline, so we're going to just hire this one guy and he'll write the entire show. Oh, which means you get yeah. worse shows that way. And yeah. it, like... They, they are basically making people write these long seasons in very short amounts of time so you don't get a lot of uh, good work out of that. And it's like, I think a lot of people look at the industry over the last couple of years and they're just sort of like, God, everything that's coming out now is just reboots and remakes and all this shit and it sucks. And I they should just replace writers, writers with AI because it's all like crap anyway. And right. I'm like, I think if you don't like what's happening in the industry right now, then you're probably on our side as well because a lot of that yeah. is the result of them being like right. risk averse and scared yeah. mm -hmm. of like, they're like, we have data that it, it's like, first of all, when you think about the entertainment industry, it's like a lot of these things are happening because back in like the nineties, there weren't as many options for entertainment as there are now. So it's like, yeah, they'd be like, well, yeah, make a movie. We don't care what it is. But now it's like, they're like, we need a guaranteed hit. Yeah. We're going to just do another star Wars. And We're everything do is like, so it's almost like over indexed on analytics. It seems yes, from like the outside looking in because it is so much like if you look at movies like, uh, or if you look at Netflix, it seems like they're especially bad for this, where they niche down to such a specific demographic that they're mm -hmm. going for for a project. They're like Tall Girl. It's going to be a movie mm -hmm. about totally <laughs> tall four tall girls by tall girl. And even the way or that written movie, by a short guy actually probably it, I think and, it literally is because I was <laughs> I worked on a video on it that I scrapped. And who knows better about sh tall girls than short guys? Yeah, 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 yeah that's true. Uh, they know but, them from a different angle. If correct, yeah. the lowest. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and it's like also just like all that stuff is very it's data driven to the point of like them being like here's you need to capture an audience at this point and in 15 minutes it needs to be this and this and this yeah because like they have data of like when people stop watching and they don't want to yeah. make things anymore that feel like it is 
based on like creativity or just mm, even yeah. just the idea of someone having a vision and making or a cultural thing. cachet. Like you can't no. like, eh. so uh, we used to work in tech and one of the things that like, I remember from a meeting about this, is, I worked, this is a, the first job of my tech career was like at Yelp. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking, it was like some sort of product meeting where we were looking at graphs and someone was taught, said the phrase, you can't iterate yourself to a product vision because the whole thing was like, oh, if we just slightly tweak the color of this button and the way that this looks, it'll slightly get us a, a tiny little lift in user engagement. Yeah. But like that doesn't create an overarching vision. Totally. And much in the same way as if you're trying to take an individual episode of a show and just get engagement, you're going to no offense to what Mr. Beast is doing, but you're going to like Mr. Beastify it where it's like only trying to yeah. like, like grab Engagement attention is, at all. Right. And it doesn't like, that's where it stops because that's where the metrics stop because we don't have metrics for how good something makes someone feel or how much something, someone endears some, some, um, someone to a story or and something like they that. They don't really, the thing is they're not caring about that anymore because yeah. they are just kind of like, well, we got the, like we have the numbers and we're, you know, we're selling to our investors based on the idea of how many people are watching. We, we're, we need subscribers and all this thing. And what they want now is something called a second screen experience where it's like, they want content that can just be existing in the background and it's not, doesn't require investment to watch. And I like, remember reading about Emily and Paris being a good example of that for Netflix. Like this is from the investors side yeah. where they, it, with regard to the second screen experience, because it's a low, it was like a low budget show to create, mm -hmm. but it like sits in the background for a lot of households. A very reliable demographic. Reli yeah. For a reliable demographic. And it's like a silent, it's like a sleeper, like young Sheldon type hit where it's like, okay, this is extremely popular, but I've never met someone who's like actually totally. watching it. It's and it's like, it's, it's one like of those utility of a CSI. But Absolutely. Yeah. That's what they a want. A fifth of the price on with a slightly more, I guess, slightly more niche audience. Totally. Opinion, and it's like, it's the kind of thing where it's like, someone will probably watch it even if they're like, this sucks. Cause it's like, it all comes out at once. It's such a low mm -hmm. investment. It's just like, it's content that they will watch. And it's like, I, I want to reiterate, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Like no. content is valuable as is television, but it's like the idea of like, once things become more of a, a content, like driven industry, then it just starts to feel like, well, then the creators are being pushed out when it's like, we don't need as many of you guys. Yeah, absolutely. The and first thing to be sacrificed is always the, yeah, the creative absolutely. portion, especially since like Netflix really benefits from being so decentralized to the point where like, they're just net, the, the corporation is the thing we point to. Totally. Never is like a name of an executive or something referenced because a, most people don't know, and B, that team is so big and vague mm -hmm. that yeah. when we have to criticize a streaming platform, we kind of just criticize streaming platforms as totally. like an ideology. And then, you know, you go on IMDb if you want to do criticism, and the first two listings are the top build and the writer slash everything above the line. Yeah. And then you just have to be yelled at because the the rise of skywalker script was mid when a project is bad the writers get blamed when yeah. a project is good it it rarely is like oh those writers hell yeah it's, sure, it's very yeah. much like the people who get blamed when something sucks is the writers yeah and unless you are like the biggest name i you rarely get credit for a project success even though it's like it starts with you and right when a project is bad it rarely it's like no one writes a script and then they send it off it's like we're gonna shoot exactly this it gets mm. changed so many ways yeah. and it's like a lot of people are like well i'm glad that this thing sucked because that writer sucks and it's like I don't think that what you saw on the screen is what they turned right. in. Right. <laughs> also, if something was good to have gotten here. Yeah. It doesn't mean yeah. that everything they've done is incredible, but it's, it is not. It is serviceable material. And, sometimes and if something comes are, out shit, yeah. something happens. Sometimes they're easy to work with, and that's why they continue to yeah. work. And it's like, because they won't uh, like fight when a producer's like, <laughs> what if this scene was set to a rap song or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I don't want it to come off like we're sort of doing the like content elitism where like some content is better than others. No. It's more about the the sort of analytics -y thing driving all content to be like more cookie cutter totally. and more and less risky. And I think it, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, historically, especially in the age of Netflix, there's been a huge, um, there's been a huge growth in shows that people become invested in uh, getting canceled before yeah. they resolve because show, uh, 
shows in these third seasons or whatever don't end up getting the engagement and numbers as, as much as the first season. And so I feel like a lot of Netflix shows that people love, like your sense eights and stuff of the world mm -hmm. end up like getting cut early without any because they're just kind of like well we put them all out at once and so we have the data of how many people are watching it immediately and if it's not enough they're not going to sit around and wait just being like well we'll hope it picks up steam in a couple months they're right. just like well we see the data it's not enough yeah. you can do something cheaper at least a little more transparency for the creative teams as far as the number no, no just as they they do just not nothing. we do not get numbers we do not get okay. engagement at all it, there's none and it's uh frustrating and i that's one of the things that i think is the reason this strike is still going on is because a lot of people are like a lot of the things that we are asking for uh, I think that for studios to do it easily does require them to be upfront with their engagement numbers and they just don't want to I, right my theory is because they've been lying about it for a while but I think <laughs> some of it is also just them being like we don't want to say what's a success and what's not because then we have to like we're responsible right to our advertiser to our investors to all of these people right. that we don't we would rather just sort of be able to control it's a very opaque industry even in our space with like yeah numbers and pay for like advertising yeah. and stuff yeah. and like de that deliberately so as well like don't get me wrong we do have specific restrictions on what we're allowed to talk about especially when it comes to private advertisements and mm -hmm. stuff which makes complete sense yeah but on the other side i think there uh for as long as i've been watching youtube there's a little bit of like kind of deliberate ambiguity as to like yeah. hey i'm just a reg i'm just playing some video games <laughs> just a guy like I put out a video every single day with 500,000 views because I'm playing Sonic every totally. day but yeah, hey man I'm just a gamer that's just <laughs> multi multi billionaire right <laughs> you're like hmm the camera's gotten better over the course of watching this and why is you're... Ryan Reynolds guessing yeah. this video there's a lot, there's a big echo on your on your thing the room is larger like, <laughs> yeah. huh. I guess Tom <laughs> like Aiden Ross streaming to like in his 20 million oh, yeah, dollar mansion dude. with no furniture so the echo oh, is wow. insane uh, it's to no account of taste with that kind of stuff right and now. it's with like streaming networks also they like because they don't have advertising all of the mm. like dis decision of like what counts as a success or like what they're looking for is just on subscribers and it's so weird because it's like they release three shows a week and if the subscriber count goes up it's like well how do we know yeah. what's responsible for it and right. it just feels like there's no concrete way for the creators or the audience to understand what a success is besides them saying yeah it was big and you're like okay okay What's so big? can we and it's like great does that mean we get another season it's like maybe we don't know Who, yeah. we, who's to say yeah. Yeah. hey man i remember seeing some posts from like uh some of the like oranges the new black actors who were like and oh and i should say that so the writers guild of america was the first to start striking yes and then sag the screen actors guild uh, began or at least uh, voted. Yes. To uh, I'm also a part of SAG, although I act way less. Uh, but yeah, we voted to authorize a strike, which basically means if they go to the table and a deal is not reached, then they will strike, okay, I think, cool. at the end of June. Um, the DGA, the Directors Guild, um, d d they did not vote to strike, but they did reach a tentative deal. But I think the way the DGA works is now all of the members of the DGA, the Directors Guild. I Sorry, I feel like I start using acronyms and then I'm mm -hmm. like, is someone listening to this being like, too many letters? <laughs> no, no, no. It, like, is, it is like tech in that way. Yeah. Right? yeah. Once, they, once they lock in, you know, because right. the GA is always the same. There's yeah. too many, yeah. Um, but the Directors Guild basically votes after a deal has been reached if they want to ratify the deal or if they're like, no, this sucks, get a better deal. Um, but yeah, it is a very tumultuous time. What um, is the sentiment right now? Is that one? I, I mean, I think the general sentiment is fuck these studios trying to screw over people. Uh, and it, it's like they're, it, it's so, we're very lucky to even have a union. And like, it feels like I'm, I'm very glad to be part of multiple unions that are fighting for our rights as uh, creatives and performers. Cause there are so many, there are parts of this industry that still are not unionized. Yeah. And that really sucks. Like there is, there's a very, very large, uh, uh, a brand, a big union called IATSE basically mm -hmm. that it's like pretty much every other part of the industry. It's like not performers, not writers, not producers, not directors, but then there are different like sub guilds within that. And, uh, like there, it's like every other person that's on a set is usually, uh, in IATSE. 
Um, but then there are even within IATSE, there are people who it's like VFX people are not unionized. Yeah. Right, okay. uh, and there's multiple and they're heavily abused, of heavily the, abused. Yeah. And it sucks. And I, I feel bad because it's like you see the, a lot of the sentiment from the writers or with regards to the writer strike from people who work in VFX being like, oh, why? Why are they like getting to do this? And we aren't. And it's like it's. First of all, I want to say, like, I think a lot of people look at the writer's strike and they're just like, oh, they all get paid so much anyway. Why, like, why do they think they deserve even more money? And it's like, I think everyone deserves to be paid way more. Like, I, yeah. I think teachers, like, I'm glad whenever I feel like a teacher's union yeah. goes on strike. I think VFX, I wish they could unionize. I think that they can't unionize because A, it's a lot of remote work. So there's no having to be in person. And mm -hmm. B, if they did unionize, all those jobs would be shipped overseas. And mm -hmm. so it's very hard for them to find the motivation to be like, let's stop working and try and make sure we're getting treated fairly, even though they are very heavily abused, both on set and after yeah. production is done. Well, this, the sentiment of if them, why not me, is just that is the most successful corporate propaganda Absolutely. in human history. The, the number of guilds that have voted against themselves or just refused to be formed or the number of states or, or I just say like uh, constituencies that pushed against, say, Bernie yeah. because they got their healthcare through uh, like three generations of oh, yeah. striking yeah. for that healthcare as opposed to just getting better free healthcare. Totally. For, but everybody gets I it. They didn't strike. Or an so. industry of, uh, an industry dedicated to busting unions or like corporate infiltration of yeah. like these, uh, of people trying it's to, fucking evil. to uh, uh, collectively bargain. It's wild that it is. Legal. Like, like it's, yeah. it's, you can literally do corporate sabotage. They can send a 007 in to pretend to be a part of the guild and then just start like the same putting people, diarrhea in all the food. The right. same people that uh, that Wizards of the Coast oh, sent, yeah. sent to that one guy. This is a story we talked about like uh, a couple weeks ago, months mm. ago, where um, this small creator who like just opens up Magic the Gathering cards yeah. online was uh, mistakenly sent an unreleased box of cards uh, early by like a month. So mm -hmm. like not even that big a deal. And uh, he made a video about it and they sent the Pinkertons to his house. Oh my God. <laughs> and like the Pinkertons have a history of like violent union busting right. and like assassination of like uh, leaders of, of, um, of unions. Yeah, it's stuff. like they sound like the watchmen. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so they got a bunch of backlash for that, obviously, but yeah. still, um, yeah, it's a, it's a wild time, but it is cool to see so much, um, attention being brought to it. Yeah. It's fantastic. It, it really, it's like the change that's happening. Like I think a lot of people do have the the feeling of like, okay, the, the higher paid writers are striking for more money. And it's like, not really. We're kind of striking for the new generation of creatives. It's mm -hmm. like, I'm not out there because I'm like, I want more money. I'm out there because I want the ability. Like you go out and you talk to people and it's like, how do I become a writer? And you kind of go like, I don't know anymore. It feels hard yeah. to get in and you want the door to be open and you want the opportunity for more stuff to be made and you want it to be made fairly. You don't want to mm -hmm. sort of uh, have this feeling that it's like, you're going to get in here, but it's going to fucking suck. You're going to get your dream job and you're going to hate it. Also you want, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like I personally would like to see uh, more people working in these jobs, having a share of the Absolutely. Sort of capital that they well, yes. yeah. equity is Residuals so, yeah, and equity, equity is yeah. a big part. Plus, yeah. the, I mean, the, the demand, which has been the demand of like a lot of different guilds in a lot of, not even just the entertainment industry, is not like, so there was a, a very long and still unresolved uh, nursing strike in mm -hmm. the UK, or general NHS strike around a lot of industries. And the nurses and the trainee doctors get, Blamed by the UK public as yeah. maybe like even more manipulable when it comes to uh, work conditions and, and rights and the like. Because, you know, Thatcher spent her, her entire disgusting existence <laughs> like, like informing the North that they should breathe in chemicals for fun and right. like eat coal. <laughs> they, it, 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 the response from uh, Rishi Sunak and the Conservative government has literally just been like, 
Shut up, man. I don't fucking... Hey, you're being really scary right now. Yeah. <laughs> you're being a little rude, actually. It's it's a frustrating result to any strike where people are just like, you're making trouble and like, stop mm. making trouble. And it's like, that's it's the point of a strike. And I know it's inconvenient for a lot of people, but it's just like... It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. <laughs> and it yeah. sucks. And like, the strikers don't want to be doing either. Like, no. they want to be working. The nurses want to well, be that, fucking working, but yeah, it's like, ask, they want to be working fairly. They ask from them and they ask from the rail strikes. They ask from every guild, the first one, is basically just but inflation happened yeah we're not it's not a it's not a living wage anymore it right. was but like also i can't be paid as a writer like i was and like if i wrote casablanca where they give you a pr like a single penny yeah i was like, like thank you, you so much if you made sir. a net if you made friends you make like 550 million dollars yeah. you have to work again now if you make a hit show it's like oh it might be a couple thousand and it's like we don't want we're not saying let's go back to the level of friends we're just saying like there should be some, some, some in between yeah <laughs> yeah did you see we talked about this on our bonus um patreon.com slash sad boys we talked about this last week did you see that vanity fair article about lost Yes. Oh, oh fuck it and I, I bought the book off of that and I've yeah, been reading yeah, it. Oh, it's yeah, great. Yeah. Yes. Um, the, I guess, cause we did only talk about that on the Patreon episode, patreon.com slash that ways. Um, but five dollars you get it. Yeah, yeah, five dollars you get all the episodes. Okay, it's fine. It's well. it's cool. It's just, it's just paying for Jordan's visa. It's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but, uh, the, there are horror stories of like the only, like some of the only black people in the writer's yeah. room or Harold Perrineau, like the one black star with like all of the pedigree kind of being shelved and, and, and sort of feeling misused and then being harassed essentially by <laughs> like ABC when he went on an interview and alluded to there being some racial like connotations yeah. to his treatment. Which was very like, Charitable, charitably, I mean, like, charitable could have just fair. been like, yeah, they just made jokes about lynching me. He didn't say that. But yeah, no, have. but they did he allegedly did make it. jokes about lynching Mr. Echo. <laughs> but the um, in in obviously that was twenty years ago. But it speaks to the foundation that a lot of like culturally the foundation that this industry kind of sits upon and has sat upon for you know a hundred years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, it's no secret that Hollywood is just like a cesspool of abuse. And I, I think it, it's frustrating that whenever we try to stand up for at least the like part of, of the abuse that it feels like we can fight against, people are just kind of like, well, you're making trouble now. And mm -hmm. it's like a rising tide lifts all boats. I yeah. think there should be a general strike. I would love if all industries were like, we all want to be treated fairly. Yeah. We can be, it's not a, it's not a pipe dream. Right. It's not a, it, like, I was gonna say it is a zero sum game in the way that the people who are making 90% of the profit do have to share some of those profits yeah. downstream. But like, Re, like you do you need the second yacht is like always the like yeah argument because truly that's how big the the margins are and also you can still get the second yacht you can probably get the second yacht how big is the pile have to be yeah yeah is there a if as far as the like audience or listeners viewers go is there a thing that consumers and non-guild members can do in support? I, I a lot of people have asked that and I, I don't know because the WGA has said that they don't want to like tell everyone to like cancel subscriptions or whatnot. Right. And I, I think that's true. I, I know a lot of members themselves are like, no fucking cancel those subscriptions. I think just, you know, being sub, I, I really don't think that there is. I, I know that uh, a lot of WJ members have gone out to strike at studios and like found secret shoots and have been picking them to shut them down. Oh. Cause luckily, like we're very lucky that the teamsters, uh, who are basically, you know, the guys who drive in the equipment and load and whatnot have a rule where they will not cross picket lines. So yeah. if you create a picket line at a, a location shoot, they can't cross it. Um, but outside of that, I, I really don't think there is anything that the general audience can do. I, I think just staying aware of it and yeah. Being mindful about your consumption, just like Think, like it sucks to be like, oh yeah, you know, like the things that you take for granted and appreciate are the product of like hard work and totally. labor and being, um, uh, what's the word? I'm losing my words. Being, I mean, my understanding of the hmm. conditions under which those pieces of art and content are created yeah. is, you know, goes a long way. Yeah. 
Um, sympathetic is the word I was looking for. There it is. Being sympathetic. Um, well, thank you for talking about that, Demi. I, I, uh, it's probably, no, I know it's probably like tiring. I'm to, sure you, I honestly, it so it's much. not, I always, okay, great, great. it's like, also, this is the only thing going on in my life right now. So I'm always <laughs> right. happy to be like, well, I have a thing to say. I just feel bad. Cause I, I can almost feel the people tuning up being like, okay, I don't, this, Hey, I don't know what this is. I mean, we're engaged and, and, uh, w- don't worry. We got this. Okay. Um, we're engaged. No, let's talk about Congrats. baby Gronk. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I Dude, actually, the, just reading baby Gronk, by the way, makes me really happy. Livy risks up baby Gronk is the funniest <laughs> collection of words. That I, I think I've read. All I about. refused to go on a deep dive about that because I, I think my brain's already just on its last legs, but I, I just, I was, I don't understand the baby Gronk thing. Cause it sounds like he's not related to Gronk. Gronkowski. Yeah. He's just yeah. like, they or, Groot. Just, or Groot. It's like, if I just had a kid and I was like, baby LeBron. And it's like, <laughs> this, he doesn't know LeBron. It's just, yeah, no relation. I just actually. chose LeBron has his own children, but yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, so this is so optimistic when it comes to like what the next generation of players will be because they will have robot legs. Like absolutely. they're going yeah. to be in, yeah. like, insane. I'm going to be old. Grunt. It's, it's truly, um, maybe I, we didn't plan to talk about this, uh, in, in the form of grabbing resources, but I might, have oh my god he has baby gronk's phone number <laughs> i might be able to call him in you know what a what a bg <laughs> how i i'm taking this way too seriously now but how old is baby gronk nine okay wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh. livy just convinced baby gronk to commit to lsu baby gronk is the number one college football prospect in the country livy rizzed him up livy even hugged baby gronk who <laughs> might be the new riz king do you think baby gronk will lead lsu to a national championship Livy. <laughs> <laughs> so, the new risk king never fails to the, get me. so this guy is like he he makes like uh oh. satirical tiktoks and stuff but um it is a real thing and it's sadder the reality of it so like livy is a uh a lsu gymnast who's like very popular on social media and then baby gronk is truly this nine-year-old kid whose dad keeps like getting colleges to like his dad is kind of manufacturing all this. he's like he's having him meet all these influencers. he's got an entire life his his entire life has to double before he's even in college mm-hmm. exactly yeah there, and also you, you just shouldn't have that clear and that action shot of footage at a child no yeah. like that was a cool shot of him running to the end zone. Yeah. You shouldn't have that on your phone. I think this is all, it's like dark from a funny perspective of like, what is the world come to? But it's also exactly. dark from a like, this is a child who's not getting to be a child. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And it, it gets even worse when you look at some of the interviews that baby Gronk has done where his, and I hate that I have to keep saying baby Gronk. Like, every time you say it, I think it, it feels like a, like a, like a, one of those like baby Bjorns. It feels like a tool. <laughs> oh, baby yeah. Gronk. It's like, I, I want to go like buy I a baby Gronk. Baby Gronk. Yeah. 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 I'm getting a bespoke Swedish baby, baby Bjorn. Gronk. The yeah. Baby Gronk. Baby Gronk. Baby Gronk. Uh, with the, yeah, the two dots over the O. <laughs> the, um, so one of the interviews I saw, the dad off camera is like, flex on him, flex on him. And he's like, <laughs> and then the Riz King is a whole other thing. I hate it. It's all very dumb. But that's, uh, it's also like the way the guy delivers it to camera. It's like his face doesn't move. It feels ve- it's like very dead eyed. I don't. Yeah, that's, I think that guy's that's his little shtick. You know, on TikTok, you're like you do a shtick that pops off, and then you have to do that exclusively, or else uh, yeah, no one watches. That's, that's a lot of uh, content, and I think why I sort of was just sort of like I don't think I can do anything anymore. Is like you, you, get, <laughs> yeah. you get tired of doing stuff, and then people are like, "You're the guy who does this stuff." I'm just like, mm, yeah, no thanks, I don't want to. Is, is I, it just a case of? When it comes to content outside of what is now like what you focus on, writing, writing, right? Yeah. Is it a kind of brain real estate thing where if you had the time and the resources, you would want to get back into short form content or something that's not career oriented? I think it's like, I right, like. Because you did Vine and stuff back in the yeah, day. Yeah. Vine, podcast like a loser. The thing. Uh, like, oh, like a, oh, big, like a big dumbass. Fan, big fan okay. of uh, the Demi podcast era. Oh, thank you so much. I think it's it's partially just me going, I can make this my life and have like a very like cushy existence, but is it what I want out of like my career and like right. what, what are the things I feel passionate about? And also just feeling like I think that the content world, at least in my experience, is very like 
you make a thing and then you're beholden to this audience that wants to go, I, we want more of this thing from you and they're not interested in anything oh, else. Yeah, people are like make September every month. Yes. <laughs> and I, and I just kind of like, well, I like doing so many different things. I don't want to, yeah. it's like, I kind of just like, I like doing a thing and then doing all these other things. And I right. want to be known as someone who does so much and not just someone who's like, you do this one thing and I like this one thing. Can you do this one thing? Yeah. And so I, I get very burnt out, but it's like, I, it's also, I, I think I still, I'm not like out of the content game. I think I'm just, I like it as a thing that I don't, create on demand. It's like, mm -hmm. if I have an idea, I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, absolutely. Which is also just a privilege to get to that point. So yeah, yeah. But to get to make content, the fun thing yes. as opposed to, but well, like, I'm, I'm having fun, but I am beholden to dropping something in, yeah. in three yeah. days. Yeah. I think that, so when I initially started my like content, like I was, was going to say career, but it was really just a hobby. Your bullshit. My content bullshit. When you initially got on your bullshit. When I was on, when I began to be on my bullshit, I was making videos that were tangentially related to the tech industry. Mm -hmm. And it was because that was getting views, like that little niche, you know, yeah. people say you should niche down and stuff. But then what happened was that everyone wanted tech info from me. They wanted yeah. to know how to work in Silicon Valley, how to like work at one of these big companies. And that's not at all what I wanted to be like known to totally. talk about. And even it took years for me to stop getting comments that were like, when's the, like bring back the tech videos. And I never even made that many of them. It was yeah. just the first things that popped. And so they were the first things that people knew me from. Um, and I feel like now uh, there's definitely a lot more leeway in this space that like we occupy. Um, you know, sometimes you do have to play the game where it's like, I feel like most of our thumbnails are presented in a way that it's like, oh, you probably have a goofy take on this weird thing that happened. We could stick Gronk in this one, for example. That oh, for sure we could. Yeah, that. exactly. And, 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 but for me, like knowing that the substance of it, you know, it's like, oh, sure. Let's say baby Gronk is on the thumbnail, but then there's like a substantive conversation about the writer sure. strike. I feel more comfortable with yeah, that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, because fortunately, you know, I have never, like, because uh, a lot of the content I made is in a longer form context, I've never had that much issue retaining the audience once they're in the door. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. You know, it's like people stick around, like for this podcast, people stick around for some reason. And um, and so, yeah, but it is a dance. And it is like, there that equation, I think, exists at at all forms in all kinds of spaces, even when you look at like how Netflix A-B tests their thumbnails for their shows yeah. and shit like that. But- um, Is there any of that kind of, it could be frustration or, or just experience, but do you get a lot of that in your space as well? Like does the room present some of that stuff? Because like, I know you have to negotiate and compromise and it is like a- Totally. Uh, but like, uh, what do you mean? Uh, what so kind you, of stuff? If you're like working in the room or working directly with Netflix, do you ever feel as though there are like, pride swallows and creative oh, compromises absolutely. for the benefit of marketing and getting eyes. Totally. And I think, I mean, any well, creative yeah. collaborative industry is going to be a lot of swallowing your pride for either someone else's vision or someone else's insistence of like what will work. And I think when it's not your baby, when it's not your thing that you're making, there's a little bit of that and you just, it, it comes with the territory and you're kind of like, all right, it's not my thing. I, I'm going to do the best within these uh, parameters. But you also hired me for a reason. Right. At a certain point, you are just kind of like, why, what am I doing here? If you do feel like you are sort of just like giving me guardrails to push yeah. me away from what is my take on things. But I also think the more that, uh, you, the more that uh, baby Gronk, <laughs> yeah, I, he, he actually became the Riz King and wanted to hit me <laughs> no. up. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't <laughs> let him call me too much because he's asking for tips. Um, I want to be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's my field. <laughs> he wants to cross the line. <laughs> oh no, baby Gronk. He's uh, a scab. I <laughs> totally forgot. <laughs> Will baby Gronk join the Pinkertons? <laughs> oh no. I honestly forgot what I was saying, but I, I just uh, like we're talking I, like pride swallows and to, they hired me for a reason. Yeah, they they hired you for a reason, but also like you you are sort of working to a point where you do feel like you'll get to have your full like idea of what your voice is on display, and I think that's a thing I struggle with a lot because I I think that as a writer I am very like. Uh, and I don't know, this is going to sound like I'm, I'm like blowing my own heart, but like, I think I think very logically. And I, I think it's like when I'm writing, I'm sort of like, okay, there is a puzzle to be solved here and I'm filling 
the 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 blank with a thing that works right like from a, a structural standpoint or Definitely. like i'm being like it works for this and this and i think a lot of times when i get pushed back on that i'm just like but it's the but right it thing work. it fits yeah. you're asking for a circle and it needs a square yeah um but of course I, you're right to give your feedback and i welcome it hey you know your idea gets us the idea but you're wrong objectively i was right the first time what i said yeah and haven't it, you seen story theory by <laughs> Demi- did you even <laughs> right uh, no, Idiot. but, <laughs> and I say this to them. No, I, I, I think I, I try often to sort of like quiet that voice in my head and just kind of be like, it's not my baby. It doesn't matter if it right. feels wrong to me or if it's like, it's just, I, I think un, until it becomes a thing that you are creating, you sort of put up with the idea that like, this isn't your vision and you can give your vision as much as you can. And some of it will get in, but you do have to sort of relinquish the idea that you're making work for someone else essentially. Um, which is hard to do as a creative person. Cause you're like, but I, I know I can do this and you saw that I can do this and that's why you hired me. So right. what, but anyway, they're for peppering yeah. so much with, with writer questions. I, I, I think it's just interesting for a good chunk of our audience, especially with what you said of, Hey, how do I get into writing and mm. being as ambiguous and kind of like deliberately inaccessible and, and, yeah. and community oriented or nepotism here and there. It's, it's hard, but like the. Where's your, where's your imposter syndrome at? It's it's weird. I think that with regards to, I think in general as a creative, I do generally have imposter syndrome, but something about writing, and I think it's because I do think very functionally and have like a very formula math brain, I don't feel like as much of an imposter there. And I do think it's like, I've gotten to this point where I kind of look at my work and I'm like, I think that's good. Or I'm, mm-hmm. I will be like, I think that doesn't work. And I think it needs to be fixed. I think with everything else, full on imposter syndrome, um, I, 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 like I'm, I, I'm trying to be a director more. Uh, and it's just like, which is hard because it's just so much like you can write, anyone can just sit down and write. But I think to direct on any scale, it feels a little more like, real it takes so much work and so much involvement but i think i have so much imposter syndrome there of being like well if i'm directing it's got to be it's got to be perfect or else i will be laughed out of the room or whatever and i think it's so hard to right. fight against that there's They'll a certain- take away my credit they won't even call yeah, a director exactly and it's like i've directed stuff that turns out and i'm like it's not as good as it could be and i think that just makes me feel a little worse but i, I think also just in the virtue of getting to direct and getting to feel like i did some stuff that was good i i think i don't have that much of imposter syndrome. But I, I think in general, it's like, I know, I, I think I'm so reserved in general that when I do have an idea that I am like out with and I just sort of like say and like feel like I'm expressing, I am like, I'm saying that because I believe in it. And I have sat with it for so long and I'm like uh, just thinking about it and being like, no, this is, it's gotten to a level that I deem good that I, I think I'm confident in my writing um, but I, I think that's another reason why I, I sort of feel like I've pulled back on content is because like, I think that when I make stuff for an online audience, there is a thing that in my head I am doing it for. And I'm like, I'm doing this to show off this aspect of my talent or this thing, and this thing right. that I think is good. And I think a lot of times it's like something else gets seen as like the highlight and it feels like yeah, yeah. you're losing your, your vision of being like, here's what I am or here's what I'm trying to show you I can do. And they're like, right. this guy loves this song. And I'm like, that's not what this is about. That's, uh, uh, John Green, the author had a, I like grew up watching his videos mm-hmm. like on YouTube. And one thing he always said is like, once you put something out, like, cause he, you know, writes like young adult fiction for primarily. Yeah. Uh, once you put something out, it like belongs to the audience. It's no longer yours. Be- it's no longer because, and I'm sure he didn't get that quote from you know himself, but, but, uh, because yeah, you can't control what aspect of people, what aspect of something people grasp onto. And, uh, there's a vulnerability in that yeah. because you, have to put yourself out there knowing that you cannot control just like in life you can't control totally. people's perception of you you can't control the aspects of your personality you can be like i'm the guy with the cool haircut and everybody's like i really like your shirts yeah you know what i mean and it's like but but i <laughs> i spent so much money on the haircut and it's also hard because i think we now i think culturally everyone wants to have the right impression of things, but also to not hurt anybody. And I think that there's a lot of times where people do something and it unintentionally comes across as bad. And you're like, well, I spent so much time trying to do this. And everyone's like, 
what the fuck is that? Like you did this awful thing and you're like, what? Hey, no, I, I spent a lot. And so I think yeah. in that process of like trying to create and not be in that zone, yeah. you spend so much time thinking about every little thing and being like, right. how do I make sure this like goes exactly down the right lane? And I think mm. from that you create something that is just a little like, I, I think that's part of where you get to like the, the Netflix of things where it's like, right. it's, it's just it's so safe. safe. It's, on, it's so you, you safe. You put up so many guardrails. Yes. I, I definitely experienced that. Call it that. creating in relief where it's like like how they make a sculpture where it's like you're cutting things away. You are mm-hmm. no longer like making something. You're not molding it. You're just sort of being like, well, it's not this. It's not this. Sure. It's not this. It's yeah. exactly this. You can't misinterpret it as anything else. Right. Which is part of why it's impossible to give somebody a narrative on how to become X or Y because it's yeah. not what we thought it was going to be, not even no. close at all. I mean, we, we have a friend, uh, Lauren, former co-worker of mine, and then and a friend who... Uh, she writes mostly or did write audio fiction, mm-hmm. primarily YA audio fiction, and then got a three book deal a handful of years ago and, and, and now has concluded that series. Yeah. And Lauren. Which is insane to think about. She's a fucking animal, dude. <laughs> she um, was like writing, it was it, like the speed at which she was writing full ass books was insane. We were making two seasons of the audio fiction show and pitching four more shows. It's all in 2019, and she wrote a book and a half Good in Lord. that time yeah. because she's deranged and a bad. It takes me so long to write anything. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm always just like, how do you do it? When pe- I think also some people just have a brain where they they can just wake up and be like, and today I'll write ten more pages. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, nope. Yeah, but she is very open about the as far as like letting it go. Yeah. She uh, has always encouraged fan fiction writing of the production, but but also to the actors and people involved as like avoid this like mm-hmm. don't let it inform your performances but now the show's concluded i think there's like a little bit more loosey-goosey stuff because yeah. brigan has concluded his story as caleb he's done acting that character for now now you can indulge in like some some you can let go of that character kind of let them graduate yeah and i don't i I feel as though I have so little attachment creatively to the to the videos I do at the least because they're yeah. just they're fun in the moment and then the edit comes back and I'm like I don't even remember doing that great that's right fun. whereas I, oh man if I if I nurtured a baby for a hundred hours a script baby it's and then so hard get, and then give it to someone else that's a, like, that's another it. thing I think uh, another reason I'm trying to like get a foothold as a working director is because there's like projects I want to make where I'm just like I want to direct this and I, I the idea of writing something and thinking about it so deeply and then handing it off to people knowing that there are things that I didn't write in there that I'm like well I just I need this to be done this way this is important to it working right it's just it scares me man yeah I I uh I have like two primary youtube channels like i have like the main jarvis johnson channel that i started and then i have jarvis johnson gold which is just me like riffing and then an editor like editing it down Mm -hmm. and i get so many comments that people can't tell the difference which is great uh but the real difference is that i spend a lot of time on the videos on my main channel and i like labor over the wording and the presentation and the fact that people can't tell the difference is really just i guess an example of the kind of creative circle jerk that goes on in your mind where you're like, I need to prove something to myself just as much as I want to put something on the page, totally. put something out there. Uh, and I guess it's good that people can tell the difference. Cause I still get to have the satisfaction of like doing something that I felt was like cool or interesting. Or, I mean, I'm writing the first video I've written in like a long time right now. And I'm, I've like, uh, been extending the deadline I'm giving myself for it so much because I almost forgot how mm. to like do it. Um, and it's like never done and there's always, and I'm such a completionist. I want to include everything that I think is is relevant and that I need, but I end up needing to kill darlings or else it's like the yeah, longest yeah. video in the world. Well, that's the, that's the thing, right? Is yeah. not having too much affection for any part of it because it's not, if it doesn't serve the product. Yeah. And it I've, is a product, and not, not even in a cynical way. It's like it's, you want to yeah. produce it. You yeah, want absolutely. It to I mean, even the word content is so reductive. But yeah. it's like, yeah, it's crazy how we've all accepted content. By the way, yeah. as the term, it, I it, remember hearing that the first time. That an influencer, terrifying. Both yes. like such dystopian terms, and now we're just like, yeah, yeah. It's so forward. removed, and I it's it does feel weird because I think people. It's like everyone takes in content, but you do just feel weird about it it's almost like sort of it, it's very dystopian but it, it also just feels like this thing in your brain where you're like this isn't real it is mm-hmm. it's it's something that is filling a gap between real things mm-hmm. and it's like that's 
it sucks to think of it as that. Right, right. Can I, can I ask, we touched on it a little bit before the show, and we can cut this if you don't want to get into it, but we talk about it like a fair bit on the show. Um, you talked about Adderall mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah, I'll get into it. Because we were uh, discussing shortage, you know, which is like our version of talking about the weather. Yeah. I was sure. like, hey, so what's going on with these damn... Can't you know, my prescription. The pills. Hey, I went down to CVS, asked if they have, and they ran away. My pills are so cold. <laughs> they pulled this down week. that shutter and said, no. No, they had that. <laughs> Stop bullying me. Yeah. Um, but the, you, I don't know what it is treating in particular. Sure. Uh, so I was. What's wrong with you? Oh, many a thing. And, <laughs> you know, still trying to wait on some diagnoses. No, uh, but I was 24 and working on a TV show. Uh, just It was like. I was the good place. It was my dream job and I was falling asleep in the room and it had been something that had happened a few times throughout high school. And I, and I think college a little bit. And I always just kind of was like, man, I just hate this class or I'm lazy. Or I'm not getting enough sure. sleep or whatever. Right. And then like, I was at my dream job feeling like I'm well rested and I want to be here and it's still happening. And it was just this weird thing where like, I would be like, Oh, I'm okay. I'm trying to stay awake, trying to stay awake, paying attention. And then suddenly would wake up not realizing I had fallen asleep. And yeah. I was so panicked. It felt like my first like time being like an adult where I was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to get help for this. If I'm falling asleep here, something's yeah. wrong. Yes, Because exactly. this is not class. It's not, I'm not bored. I am engaged. I'm, it's, I'm looking around, I'm with my heroes and it just feels like I'm still right. falling asleep. And it felt like this weird thing that I just didn't know what to do about it. And then when the show ended after the damage had been done of like, okay, this guy is, uh, <laughs> this guy's falling asleep on the job. What's his deal? Yeah. What's his deal? His first writing job. Um, uh, I, uh, went to a doctor, uh, a psychiatrist who was just kind of like, maybe it's ADHD and, uh, you know, looking into ADHD, it kind of made sense to me. And so I, I, uh, got a prescription for Adderall and for like four years, I was like, yeah, this, this is it. This totally makes sense. Uh, and then I had switched therapists and was getting her up to speed on like what was going on with me. Uh, and just being like, and you know, falling asleep because of ADHD. And she was like, that's not, <laughs> what do you mean? That's not how that works. And she was like, it sounds a lot like narcolepsy. Uh, Shut and, up, you quack. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> never I seen this lady again. I know what this is. <laughs> I've already found this. I've got my normal ADHD burps. <laughs> yes, I figured it out. The guy who didn't look at me once in our session gave me the drugs. I'm fine. Um, but uh, so then I went and did a sleep study. And it's funny. During the sleep study, they, they basically are like, you're going to go to sleep overnight. And then we'll wake you up and you basically are going to every two hours be allowed to go to sleep again for like 30 minutes. And over the course of those two hours, every time I was just like, God, I cannot fucking wait to go back to sleep. And then there was one time where they measured and it's like, yeah, you fell asleep in 26 seconds. That's not like you were in REM sleep in 26 seconds. That's not supposed to happen. You absolutely have narcolepsy. And I was like, oh, oh <laughs> crazy. Whoa. Uh, I need to, I don't want to interrupt this story no. much, but I need to get a sleep study. We can bookmark it. Dude, but... I'll, I'll give you the info. It's, <laughs> oh, uh, gonna oh give my God. me the sleep study. <laughs> uh, I got the stuff right here, hey, man. I'm in bed right now. Go, right now. take this drug. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, let me study you real yeah. quick. I, I Actually, yeah. If Record you, it on the podcast. Yeah. Ooh. If you give us Patreon both, only, Jarvis sleeps for eight hours. I would. I desperately need one. Also, let's genuinely do both. Do one, and then we hey, can we'll review. report back. It's wild. I feel like since talking about this, I've realized how many people like are like, yeah, I think I also need that. I'm like, th this should be something that more doctors are just kind of like, because it feels like you go to a doctor, and they're just like, I don't know, maybe mm. it's this, and you're like, you're the professional. We please. should. That's we should te teach taxes in high school, and we yeah. should teach like general, very simple diagnosis. I'm dealing with like a lot of chronic fatigue stuff right now and one additional complication is that i'm a mouth breather i have like mm -hmm. a deviated septum and stuff and i learned that like mouth breathing can like uh shave years off of your life oh god because um because it can lead to like sleep apnea and things because you're just not you're like breathing isn't consistent as I, or I don't really know the reason, but yeah. it's just bad. And so I need them to like break my nose into a where my nose works. Uh, but I want to get a sleep study first to see what's going on there. Cause I sleep for eight hours a night, but I wake up and it sucks. Oh yeah. I was, yeah. I was saying before the, the podcast that like, I will sleep well and still wake up and like just continue sleeping. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm, t oh, I'm still tired. And I had to like, start forcing myself out of bed to not just feel depressed and like in bed until 4 PM. And I, I think it's like part of that is the narcolepsy of just feeling like my body's not getting enough rest or is not taking in enough oxygen or whatever. So I, it's constantly just feeling like, well, we're fatigued. Let's go to sleep. Yeah. And I, I, it wasn't until I was 28 that I got like a diagnosis of like, 
it's narcolepsy. The ADHD meds were working because it's treated the same way. I might also still have ADHD because I tried other narcolepsy drugs and it felt like, well, now the focus thing is a problem or like my mood has yeah. shifted, which also maybe just, I got addicted to Adderall sure. at that point. That's the worst is that like you're, you're trying to diagnose something about your like something that's wrong with you, but you also go through the ebbs and flows of a normal human existence. Yeah. And it's sometimes hard to like nail down what's, what's just variance in totally. life and what's like an actual medical condition. Oh, and like they also, especially with ADHD medication, it feels like, and bipolar medication in my experience a little bit, but that's, that one's way more, hey, it's all jazz, baby. Are yeah. you insane still? Uh, but the, in the case of ADHD medication, I feel like there's so many unique experiences with the, there's so many treatments mm -hmm. with so many possible complications. And so I've never had a side effect from Adderall. Yeah. Not just a few of them, a one ever and everything else I found really unpleasant when I tried them. Totally. And I was under the impression that like, okay, well this is just, this is all good. I've gone up and down over the years, tried different dosages. Okay. This is fairly stable. Oh, my Lamotrigine has gone up. Let's see how this fits with that one, you know, tweaked it. But then recently with the shortage, I just was not well, actually. And also when I went back to the UK over COVID, I just couldn't get it. Yeah. Like getting control medications there is so much harder. It's like you're not allowed, like allowed. Or no, they like, don't have, vi is it, they don't have Vyvanse in the UK? Just any uh, amphetamine uh, or stimulant is, it's the equivalent of like getting a tank. Like oh, it, it's just insane. But the, the, you must forget that t getting withdrawals from something like Adderall makes you depressed. Yeah. And you mix it up. I always mix it up because I'm like, well, I'm not getting my Adderall, so I'm not functional. Like, well, part that but i'm also just very sad yeah part of i uh i'm bad at taking it regularly and my girlfriend has started being like set an alarm you're gonna take it at this time every day and sometimes i'm just kind of like i'm not working today why would i take it and it's like because at the end of the day i'll be fucking depressed and just like start a fight mm -hmm. <laughs> for no reason <laughs> yeah. other than like i don't know i'm just not feeling it today yeah and it's like and why you set goals in the morning that you don't achieve i'm gonna do the laundry this evening no yeah. i'm doing do nothing actually. and then you're depressed that you didn't do it and you're mm. just beating yourself up like all i had to do was fucking do the laundry walk the dog and i can't do that you piece of shit and it's like yeah your your body needs a medicine that you're not taking right please take the medicine and for how many years do we have to know that and do that before this uh anti-mental health propaganda we're able to shed it i think the answer yeah. is like never really it's there just will so always prevalent. be people who are just kind of like it's the same thing as like the strike where it's like uh well but it, that's not how it is for me so you're probably just there's something else wrong right well people probably hear that you're a writer we're youtubers whatever and think well they're on their rise and grind that's yeah. why they can't be relying on any kind of medication or be getting help i need to be not lazy either yeah i need to be able to write the writers are medicated. They're most. all doing very well. <laughs> yeah. I, the, most of the money goes to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> I told my psychiatrist this morning that I'm so lucky that I work in this career because in no other career could I sustain the amount of lying in my bed that I need to do mm. to like feel normal. Yeah. Um, the, the hangover period of being yeah. like manic. Dude, I'm going straight to bed after this podcast and it'll be like, I'll probably be in bed from like 4 p.m. for the rest of the day. And it's a problem. And I need my sleep study. Okay. I'm going to do it. <laughs> well, you're just an eepy little guy. I'm just, I'm just eepy. Also, I just want to clarify. It's being very sarcastic when I said no writers are taking, <laughs> no, <laughs> like no creators are taking medication. Absolutely. They hella are. And also the, uh, your quality of life. Once you can set it up from getting some kind of mental health insight is only better. Yeah. There's literally no, either you get some kind of guidance and you can work on something, which is most likely everybody's got something going on, or you get peace of mind because you check. There's not like, yeah, we're there's no world experts. where you go in, they give you a diagnosis. You're like, yeah. well, now I feel way worse. Right. We're not experts. We're just sharing our experience. Please do talk to uh, experts if you have access um, because it can improve your quality of life. I'm realizing now that there's so many little things wrong with me that I have just been ignoring for my entire life. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. It's just, well, you adapt. And then yeah. the first instinct when you want to do something about it is, well, no, I'm just being, just rise and grind. Just need to work a little harder mm -hmm. on that. So my psychiatrist about a week ago and I was just like, hey, um, I was like, have you been trying out that new medication that we started? And I'm like, oh yeah, no, I had, I had to get a refill. And he's like, well, that one's available and like it will probably help a lot. I was like, oh, sure. 
And he's like, this, something's wrong. <laughs> it's weird that you're not doing yeah. it. This, this is not how a person should be. I feel like I, I didn't, I, I hit a wall so quickly with like socializing. And for my entire life, it's always just felt like, I don't know. I just, I, it's, I lose friends over like after like five years or whatever. And I'm like uh, getting to be an adult and being like, that's not how it should be. And just realizing it's like, oh, because it's hard for me. It's like, I have a level of, of anxiety and like genuine, like stress around socializing and the idea of it, like having to do it properly or like having to figure it out or like right. what I owe to people or what I'm supposed like, just the, the sort of like, uh, just the, the functional stress of trying to figure out how to be a person properly in a way that you're like, well, no one's going to tell me what they're expecting of me. So I just have to assume or like give all of myself to people. And then it's like, you get burnt out. And it's like all this stuff that's like, right. I didn't realize until I was an adult going to therapy being like, yeah, I find it hard to talk to a friend. I have to, I like to see all of my friends at once so that I can just sort of bounce between them and not feel the stress of like focus. And then it's like, what's going on in your, in your friend's lives? Like, Oh, I don't know. Cause I don't have, intense conversations with them and it's like and you're stressed with your girlfriend's like yeah because she's kind of getting it all right now it's like oh uh maybe you shouldn't maybe you're getting burnt out because of the way that you do these things and just you you start to feel like there are so many things you don't realize that you're doing wrong or that it's like oh your quality of life can improve if you just talk to someone and it's not like there's like a way that you're that everyone's supposed to do something but there is like you have stresses in your life that you start to feel like uh, you've just lived with for so long and it's not until you talk to someone about it that you can kind of go like, well, how do you balance this? Or like, what are your expectations? Right. Can I quell the, the idea that this is how something should be and just tell you like, well, there's also this other alternate way that you maybe right. don't talk to other people about because you don't feel comfortable doing so. The Keeping- answer isn't universally. I just don't like my friend. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like- exactly. That's crazy. Keeping yourself open-minded to change or the that there might be a different way of doing things that's healthier for you or feels better, I think is just a good outlook to have. Totally. I, I, I've always resented people who have all like, you know, older people who are almost calcified in their like belief system. They're like, yeah. I'm not going to change. This is just how I am. Oh man. It's like such a pet peeve for me. Cause I feel like I I've changed so dramatically like year over year. And I think we also maybe. As incredibly youthful uh, elder millennials, yeah. um, I think we we maybe have a little bit of that. Just 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 a skosh of well, when people are old, they can't change. Old dog new tricks. You can't. It's not your fault. You know. The, oh, the olden days, you weren't allowed to learn back then. Right. Just simply not the case. So <laughs> like, why are you yeah. taking new things now? I. That's not the case at all. And there are plenty of old people who are like happy to learn and change. And yeah, yeah. And those are the cool ones. So true. It's like Jarvis. Like, hold on. Wait. Oh, okay. Yes. I don't think it's cool, but yeah, he's yes. old. Okay. I before we wrap this story, I I need to talk about. Um, have you, have you heard of the bagel gate situation? I don't, this is equivalent to Gronk man. Well, yeah. like I, okay. I insane sentence, by the way, this is equivalent to Gronk, but I, <laughs> I, it's, I have five to 10% of the information and everything else I felt overwhelmed. I, have zero. I think Demi was working is, with minus five. This is very much like becoming a segment of like Jarvis talks about a weird niche internet drama, but they're. Um, are you familiar with GeoGuessr? No. Okay. GeoGuessr. Okay. Now I'm at 15%. So GeoGuessr is a game where they show you like a screenshot of Google Street View. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then you try to figure out where it is. And And some people are like preternaturally able to do it. Or some people have like sort of gotten really, really good at it to the point where they're like pro. They're the pro gamer equivalent of GeoGuessr. Oh, wow. Where they can look at the soil or the street signs or whatever and just, t- and this is not a joke. This is like <laughs> legitimately how they do things. They'll give you tips for like, yeah. oh, well, you know, Italy has these types of street signs except for in this region. And it's cool, yeah. Yeah, it's, this, very, it's very cool. This 480p Google Maps image from 2006. <laughs> yeah. And so one of the best GeoGuessr players is this guy named Rainbolt. And uh, I actually sat next to him at Mogul Money Live randomly, but he was like a few seats away. And I was like, is that the GeoGuessr guy? You're anyway, like, where are we? <laughs> and then he pulled it up. <laughs> anyway, um, so Rainbolt on his TikTok, he will, like people will hire, not hire, but there will be these challenges where someone's like, this is a photo I took as a child with my mom on a beach. And we just can't figure out where this 
important life event happen. Mm -hmm. And he'll be like, do, 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 figure it out. And he'll like find the ocean side that they like took the photo. Yeah. It would be like a wholesome moment. Uh, recently, there was a TikTok creator who, so we have some of these, maybe I don't, maybe I don't want to give too much background because I think we might've prepared some stuff. I will try to find it, but I'll tell you the, the, the spark notes. This guy makes a bagel. He's like, this is the best bagel I've had and you'll never try it. You'll never have this bagel. <laughs> and then people were like, <laughs> what is this? Dude? Is he like gape keeping a bagel? Like, why is he doing that? And then as a bit, Rainbolt was like, I'm going to find this bagel. And so he spends 40 hours like analyzing the area around the TikToks, like figures out, not figures out. The guy had his like university listed on the page. So he like looks at bagel places like near that like university. Uh, he ends up finding the place, but it was closed or no, excuse me. He ends up finding the place, this place called Bagel Market, but Bagel Market wouldn't open for two weeks. So then he, um, he DMs the original creator and goes, Hey, was it this type of bagel from bagel market? And the guy goes, no, even though it was pretty close, he just got the ingredients of the bagel wrong. And, um, and so then, uh, so then he enlists, he basically tweeted out like, I need help. I'm 40 hours into looking for this bagel and I can't find it. Another insane sentence. I know, yeah. but for him, it's like, it, it's First content, man so that that's ever happened to. Yeah. Wow. So then he- This is a guy, I'm, we're not kidding. He will do challenges like using in five frames flashing on screen in black and white pixelated to yeah. the corner of a Google Maps image and go like a oh, Kuala Lumpur. Just like instantly. Yeah. Wait, I'm I'm confused. Is yes. this it's just is this like a random person who was just like I have this great bagel? It wasn't a random person. It was like a content creator on TikTok with a few hundred thousand followers. Okay. Uh, and and he kind of you could kind of see it in that one TikTok or where, where he called said like not on my watch where sometimes he'll take like in a uh, almost adversarial relationship, like as a bit. Yeah. So I think that's what was happening here where he's like, you're not going to gatekeep this bagel on my watch. I'm going to find the bagel, <laughs> but it, it went a little bit too far. So I'm going to be vulnerable. I've spent 38 hours this week, 42 hours last week looking for a bagel on Google maps. The bagel is <laughs> in NYC. I have all possible bagels narrowed down. I will find this bagel and I will not give up. Um, and then he found the bagel because he, I found, saw this in the article I read this morning. He found the bagel because when he posted that tweet, a guy who does bagel tours in New York City mm. recognized the wrapping of the, the bagel market restaurant. So then he was able to find the bagel. And then through that guy, ended up getting in contact with the owner of the bagel market. Found out that even though that location that he originally found like in the first day hadn't wouldn't open for two weeks. They actually did a soft opening two weeks early. Mm. So it was at that location. And then he, because he was in contact with the owner and because it was a viral TikTok thing, he got the bagel named after himself. So then he was basically like, Oh, you wanted to get, keep the bagel. Now in order to get this bagel, you have to order the rain bolt. That's oh, very funny. So <laughs> sick. Um, but then got to order the gronk. But then, uh, of course, because it's the internet, I think it took a turn. Man, I just, I have no idea how TikTok even works. Like, even with stitching and stuff, I'm just kind of like, uh, yeah. okay. I've never, I open the app literally when someone sends me a TikTok just because I'm like, it's easier than watching yeah. anything, but I've never made one. So, so then. I did see this image. <laughs> so then the secret is out, X marks the spot. The, like, and so then it's like his face on the, the bagel. And then he makes this TikTok. Where it's from? I will. It's an egg, cheese, and avocado bagel from Bagel Market on Wednesday. Yo! Why are you riding my dick? <laughs> Go get a job at the CIA, bro. Use your time. Why are you... You're using it. You... You rather look... You searching the internet for... I'm never going there again, bro. You just ruined it, bro. I will never show my face in the bagel place again.
You might have got where I ate it at correctly. You might have got the restaurant correctly, but your ingredients are wrong. You'll still never be able to taste the sandwich. So, haha, jokes on you. Get a job. <laughs> Saying get a job is actually get a job is right. Th- that cuts surprisingly deep when, I am you, when all- you have a superpower. It almost like he seems to have a job. I bet he's yeah. making a lot of money off this. Yeah. Also, I'm like, you were in it for yourself. Don't post a video being like, I got the best thing and I'm never going to tell you. Like, you're taunting people yeah, to do ta- exactly it's that. Taunting that. people to do that. Here's yeah. a photo of me at a, a mountain range. I guess, could you find out where? And then they do. Yeah. Like, what the hell? You stop riding my dick, Yeah, because if you really Crazy wanted guys. it to be your secret place, then you wouldn't post about Absolutely. it at all. Absolutely. We never talk about our secret place. I did meet a patron there did i tell you that yeah and i didn't ask him for any cash so i guess i'm a pretty good guy. i got asked for a photo there and i took them to a non-discreet wall to take the photo <laughs> so that you couldn't see it it's the against background. the ground <laughs> well also now i you kind of have unfortunately you know people are going to watch this and be like secret place and then you I tap know. the box yeah so congrats. Like, yeah, I know. Get on it, GeoGuessr. Now I'm gatekeeping oh, a secret boy. place. Oh boy, I want nothing to do with this. <laughs> Keep me out of it. I am just kind of like, why doesn't this guy work for the CIA? Yeah, I mean, because um, content pays more. That's a good point. Um, and it, okay, so unfortunately, the sad ending of this is just that this kid got like harassed because people on the internet are annoying. That yeah, so like they were racist man. and stuff. But I don't think it was like ra- in Rainbolt's defense. I don't think it was his audience. I do think that it's just like sort of random people who saw this like story blowing up who just are always looking for an excuse to be racist. You this, know? Is, yeah. this is what I fear for Gronk. I worry that he will finally oh, get signed to the NFL probably within the year. He's <laughs> never going to live a normal life. No. Imagine being, it's just the name. That's crazy. Y- your your name is someone else's name. Like your legacy is I'm a small version of that other guy. That's yeah. so Weird. Is it his legal name? No. No. Oh, but, that should, it but should. also, like, people won't know his legal name. Yeah. So yeah. It, yeah. Maybe like, in that way, it's some sort of anonymity. There are a lot of sad stories of people who are like memes as children who like grow oh up and God. then like yeah. it kind of sucks. I you know, think that yeah. that's another thing about the internet and why I feel like I sometimes step away from because it's like I think you take the good with the bad, and a lot of the bad is any sort of success or like high visibility means that you do not control who sees you or what people think of you anymore. Yeah. And so it, it takes a huge toll on your mental health when you're like, I made this thing and it's like, you want it to be seen, but at a certain level of it being seen, it's like, it is now just with every like a good thing. There's like a million bad things in between it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, you just start to think like, I, I think with what I do now, I do sort of weigh the pros and cons of like, I have to like something enough that I, that I'm accepting all the bad shit that comes with it. And with a lot of content, I'm just kind of like, I don't like it enough to put in all this work and just be like satisfied with it and also accept the stuff that comes on the back heel of it. And also accept that it might not do well. It's just like you spend a lot of time on it and it just doesn't do anything. So for sure. Um, it's the double edged sword of actually getting the data. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that about wraps it up, I think, for this episode of Sad Boys. Now, we will uh, be recording right after this a Patreon-exclusive bonus episode on patreon.com slash sadboys. Oops, guilty. Lock me up. I don't know what we're talking about. What are we talking about? <laughs> My court case. Lock me up. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, I, who knows? I think I have. Oh, oh, I, there's something embarrassing that happened. Oh, me. I think we're going to watch a, like, a cut or a jubilee maybe, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're not one of those out, but the... Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to explain it. It's, it was a bit. <laughs> There's an embarrassing clip of Jordan yeah. floating around the internet, and he needs to... Beautiful. He needs I need to, to make sure most himself. people see it. That's, yeah. that's the wise move, right? But Demi, uh, it has been a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. It's been so nice to be here. Uh, I know you... I want you to shout out stuff you got going on. I know you've got a show. I know you got an Everything's Great show. Oh, coming yeah. Up. Yes. Yeah, see, uh, boom, end boom, of the boom. month, June 30th, uh, if you're in LA, uh, Dynasty Typewriter, it's me and my friends, Nick Kocher and Addie Weirich. We do a show, not with any regularity anymore, but it's always a very fun, good time, just like a variety show where we'll do different bits and what. Great show, good times. Yeah. I've, I've seen it. It's a good show. It's a good show. Good venue. Yeah. Very good venue. Maybe hypothetically, you might one day hypothetically at some point see a Sad Boys live show there. Ooh. Maybe it's already in the works. Who knows? It is. Oh, I give. I you shouldn't. Know, I you shouldn't ruined it. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. why you're going yeah, to jail. There's a, hey, there's a <laughs> but chance. yeah, is there anything else you want to shout out? Nope. I I true. It's like I. 
there's so many things that I, I like worked on that I'm, I'm like, I don't know when that's coming out. So I'm just, I got nothing. I'm not yeah. working mm-hmm. right now. Cool. I'm just hanging Strike. around. Shout, shout out to the writer's guild. Shout yes. out to uh, actors receiving fair compensation and fair terms. And yeah. Demi, I don't know if you remember this. The year's 2018, XOXO Fest. Mm-hmm. You did a performance. Afterward, I asked you to come on the show. On this show? Yeah. Oh, what yeah, did I, I say? Uh, it was at a time when we were doing it remotely. Mm-hmm. And so I think we just were like, actually, I think you were like, uh, I'll, I'll do it in person. Yeah. But, and, and so we were like, we don't have that yet. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so we finally did it. Hell yeah. It only took five <laughs> years. And that's what you'll get from me if you ever ask me to do something for you. <laughs> five years down the line. Guarantee. Yes. Yeah, guarantee. I'll put it in the calendar. Ask it now. <laughs> um, no, but we end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. We, we love, love you. you. And we're sorry. Boom. Boom. Dipper. Good boy. Good boy. Touch. Oh, wow. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. What a smart guy. What are you doing? Yeah. I would be on the couch. There we go. Cleaning. Look at that guy. What a clever Look guy. Look at that guy. Thanks for coming down, buddy. Gucci girl. Gucci girl. How you doing? How you moving, girl? Moving, girl. How's your day looking? That future girl. Future girl. Yeah, we on now. Take my money. Go away. Are you on it? Guys are rich for me.